Live from KSA 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. Hope you had a great weekend. It is Monday, December 14th. Steph, would you say that you uh, can bake? At home, to have uh, cookies, not to these toast, things, but uh, to toast and cookies. Toast? Yeah, those okay. are all on my my list. Does the toast wind up toasted, or does it lean towards well done? <laughs> Funny, you should ask. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> our our toaster is starting to give out a little bit. Oh, so if we're not paying attention and we don't right. manually like pop it out, it'll it'll burn. And I've gotcha. done it a few times. I understand. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we're apparently uh, more and more folks have been baking during the pandemic. It's one of the top search things. Google's out with their top search uh, searched recipes for 2020 and here is the list. Okay, so right there at the top, uh, sourdough bread and whipped coffee, which are both popular on social media. It took the top two spots for most searched recipes this year. For Lauren Disney fans missing the park's goodies, filled out the third and fourth spots with Disney churros and Dole Whip. Yeah, I think they were like coconuts or something like that. Okay. Oh, all right. Uh, so, so other popular bit. Oh yeah, this is the one that got me. I didn't know this was out. Other otherwise, I would have researched it. The Double Tree Cookies from the hotel chain. Yeah. Yeah, they found uh, they were in fifth, and then IKEA's meatballs came in sixth. The re recipe for that was actually released and shared back in April. So here's something different. Uh, seventh place uh, with chaffle. It's a waffle made of eggs. Could be chaffle. Or chaffle. Yeah, sorry, my bad. <laughs> chaffle. Waffle made of eggs and cheese. Unless you've been, unless you've been to a waffle house. <laughs> no, not lately. <laughs> so, yeah, chaffle. <laughs> Last three awarded the classic barbecue staples, hamburger buns, uh, let's see, egg salad sandwich recipe, and then finally, a healthy banana bread. Healthy banana bread? Yeah. Oh, or okay. Just I thought bread. it was just banana bread. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe both. Maybe it was. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, okay. sourdough sounds good though, doesn't that it? That sounds great. It's become. It was the top one this year. Um, it's a little tricky to make though, from what I hear. I haven't tried. I. Yeah. On the chocolate chip cookie route. Okay. Those are good. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> I promise. No, it sounds really good. <laughs> Waffles. Waffles. I'll have two, please. They're chaffles. That. <laughs> Let's look at today's 9 at 9. The Electoral College is voting today to finalize the results of the presidential election. President-elect Joe Biden set to receive 306 electoral votes to President Donald Trump's 232. Congress will officially count the electoral votes on January 6th. The first shipment of Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine will arrive in all states today. Healthcare workers and nursing home residents are first in line to get the vaccine. Early voting begins today in Georgia for the Senate runoff election. The winners of the two races will determine which party controls the U.S. Senate. New York police have shot and killed an armed suspect accused of opening fire outside a Manhattan cathedral yesterday afternoon as carolers sang on the steps of the church. No one else was hurt in the incident. The White House has confirmed that hackers broke into the networks of the Treasury and Commerce Departments. Russian government hackers are believed to be responsible. The U.S. has removed Sudan from its list of state sponsors of terrorism. The move could help the African country get international loans to revive its economy and end its pariah status. A bipartisan congressional group is trying to pass a $908 billion COVID-19 relief package. It's planning to split the bill into two proposals. The larger one would cover small business loans, jobless benefits, and vaccine distribution. The smaller would cover state and local aid and liability protection. The United Kingdom and the European Union have agreed to extend Brexit talks past yesterday's self-imposed deadline. The UK could be left without a solid trade framework when the Brexit transition period ends at midnight on December 31st. Cleveland's Major League Baseball team is expected to drop the Indians nickname. It's unclear when the name change will take effect or if the team has settled on a new name. And that's today's Nine at Nine. Barely warming up out there. I know, just a little bit, just 41 degrees. <laughs> Last week we were warming up quite a bit. Yeah, uh, well, you know, the wind was the big story yesterday, right? So uh, the Christmas decorations were blowing down the road last night. We, we've lost a lot of the wind. There still is a little bit of a breeze out there, enough to give us some wind chill. You guys mentioned it's still pretty chilly out there. 36 is what it feels like at the airport. 34 is what it feels like in New Braunfels. 31 in Seguin, 38 Stenson. 
So even though temperatures, yes, have jumped into the 40s, it's still a, a cold morning. We'll see temperatures rebound a little bit this afternoon into the uh, 50s. Right now, we we're checking in at 37 in Boulevardi, 37 Canyon Lake, 41 in New Braunfels, 41 Hondo, still below freezing in Los Maples, 30 there. And looking at the pollen count, you know, we were anticipating a jump in Mountain Cedar. We got it. It's not huge, uh, but it is up from where it was yesterday at 50. It's in the low category. Those winds tend to bring in some of that cedar. Thankfully, the, the county isn't too, too bad. Forecast for today, we should be in the mid 50s this afternoon. Sunset will be around 537. Northerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. A little bit of a warm up tomorrow, but we've got another couple of fronts to deal with. Some changes by the weekend. We're going to get you all that information coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Let's take a look right now. Looks like we've got a stall vehicle and maybe some last minute construction out there. 1604 and Hausman. And based on the shadows, looks like that could be eastbound 1604. New this morning at 9, a man is recovering in the hospital after police say he fell asleep in a dumpster and was picked up by a garbage truck. Happened around 5.15 this morning after the truck picked up the uh, trash behind a KFC in the 8200 block of Bandera, not far from Gilbo on the northwest side. Police tell us the driver of the truck pulled over when he heard screaming and discovered the man trapped in the back. Crews were able to get him out. Investigators say he only suffered minor injuries. Uh, the top stories today, we've learned the name of a man found dead inside a car on the northeast side yesterday morning. The medical examiner has identified him as 27-year-old Bernard Terry. Officers tell us they found his car stopped in the middle of Judson Road near George Cooper Street around 3.30 in the morning. Police tell us Terry was dead inside that vehicle and that the car had several bullet holes. Medical examiner tells us Terry was shot in the head. Police are still investigating a motive and looking for suspects. Crime Stoppers hoping you can help them track down the person accused of robbing a JCPenney store earlier this month. A cash reward of up to five grand is being offered for information that leads to an arrest. Police tell us back on December 5th, the man you see here walked into the Pennies at Ingram Park Mall and stole some merchandise. Investigators say he also assaulted an employee before running away. If you recognize this man, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers at number 210-224-STOP. This is the last week to help SA Youth stuff a stocking. Our community partners teaming up with the nonprofit to help spread some holiday cheer to kids in need. You can still help out by donating small toys, arts and crafts, and healthy snacks, or you can make a monetary donation. $25 will cover the cost of one holiday stocking. The stuff a stocking drive runs through this Friday, which is the 18th. More information is online right now at keysatcommunity.com. In your morning headlines, some airline passengers dealing with a scary scene that almost looked like it was something out of a movie. That's crazy. And police rescue a little girl after she gets stuck in a stroller. Max Massey joins us live here in the studio. Good morning, Max. Good morning, guys. So much to talk about, but I want to start with a terrifying situation out of New York City. Dozens of protesters crossing the street, escorted actually by NYPD when, take a look, a car comes out of nowhere and hits several people. So NYPD says multiple people injured. Six people had to be taken to it by an ambulance to local hospitals. Police and fire officials say the injuries did not appear to be life threatening. Now, the group was there trying to make a statement against ICE holding federal uh, immigration detainees in local jails. Now, without warning, as you can see in this video, the sedan bolted through the intersection, hit multiple protesters, it actually accelerated through the crowd. Clearly a scary situation here. I had to jump out of the way of the car. There was a line of uh, protesters on bikes to stop traffic so that they would know that there are people on the street. They drove through those people on the bikes and then hit six people. Police say the driver, a woman, actually was stopped near the area. She was taken into custody. She was being questioned. Not clear if she would face any charges. But this morning, USA Today is now reporting the suspect, Kathleen Casillo, 52 years old, she was released from custody after being given a notice to appear in court at a later date. All right, from one situation to another crazy situation, take a look at this. This is a man standing on the wing of an airplane. So this was actually a tarmac at McCarran International Airport. This is in Nevada. And as you can see, the man was somehow able to get onto the tarmac and climb the wing of the plane. Now, investigators with Las Vegas Metro Police say 41-year-old Alejandro Carlson ran up to an Alaska Airlines airplane, 
somehow was able to manage getting up on that plane. Right there, you can see him walking, now sitting down on the wing. Now, the suspect moved about the wing for 45 minutes, then he fell onto the tarmac eventually. Police say it appeared he was able to jump the airport's fence. Alaska Airlines said in a statement that the plane's pilots actually noticed the man running towards their aircraft. Immediately, they called Aircraft Control Tower for help. Air marshals inside the plane told passengers to remain in their seats as they and officers tried to get the man off the wing. He was treated for minor injuries and he was booked in the Clark County Jail for trespassing and disregarding public safety. All right, this one a little, we'll say not as hard news. A dog chase that lasted more than a mile and a half and it ended with good news. So there's a dog right here. His name is Strider and he is fantastic, but he did cause quite a mess. Thankfully, he's doing all right. Now, not much makes a dog owner's heart panic more than seeing their pet wander out in the middle of the road. And when it is a busy highway, it just makes the heart go even faster. Now, the first two years of Strider's life, he was set. He was spent on a South Dakota reservation. He was living off the land, but then he was adopted by a family. So that's an important premise because obviously, if you're not grown up in a house, you don't really know all the rules. So he still sometimes makes his way for some adventures. He was able to make it out of the yard, somehow getting through a crazy fence, and, you know, he decided to hit the highway. Two Good Samaritans tried to catch the pup. They then called 911, and that is when Trooper Eric Fairchild arrived. I walked up, and I had my hand spread out, acting like I was going to go up and pet him and give him a hug and call him a good dog, and he just sat down and... Good thing he did because he was able to get him safely. As the video shows, the trooper able to rescue <laughs> Strider. At first, he says any animal that makes it onto the highway typically doesn't make it home. But Strider's mom wanted to officially thank the trooper personally, or I guess in this case because of COVID, virtually. And she did exactly that. And we all find ourselves in some tricky situations. But little Nina here found herself stuck inside a toy baby stroller. One that looks very similar to that. So little Nina of New Jersey loves playing with her baby doll toy stroller, but her mom had to call police when Nina actually got tangled up in the stroller. A pair of Paramus police officers arrived. They kept Nina calm. They surveyed the problem and they got her out. They actually had to break the toy stroller. And guys, get this, after they rescued her, they felt so bad for breaking the toy, they returned later with a new one. I wow. You both have kids. Have you ever had to encounter a sticky situation like this? Uh, mm, nothing quite that complicated uh, no, that I recall. Thank, thank goodness. I'd be terrified. <laughs> and I'd heard about this little girl, and I knew they had to bust it to get her out, but I didn't know the follow. I didn't know the rest of the story. Yeah. So Absolutely. thank you, Mr. Well, Massey. Of course. Breaking news over here. Yeah, sounds well, like we're it. We're glad Nina's okay. Thank yes, you. Yes, thank you very much, Max. Right now it's 9, 10, 41 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. Getting rid of wasp nests in a very unique way. How this flame throwing drone is perfect for the job. San Antonio Spurs kicking off the preseason this weekend and it was not exactly all fireworks. Max and RJ have a recap plus highlights from the Cowboys and Texans games later in this newscast. And San Antonio's most popular hippo officially has his own mural at Legoland Discovery Center. Our Eric Ednettis joins us from home with details on this and other trending stories. That's next. And welcome back. It's 914. So HEB gets a big award, Peloton coming to San Antonio, and San Antonio's most popular hippo officially has his own mural. The stories are ones that you can find on KSAT.com this morning. Erica Hernandez joins us live from her casa with more. Good morning, Erica. Hey, guys. Good morning. Well, a big congrats to HEB. Despite a challenging year, as the grocery store has been named Grocer of the Year by Grocery Dive, an industry publication. Now, HEB was given the award due to its pandemic preparation and response. Grocery Dive said in a statement that the Texas grocer's pandemic response this spring showed it could move mountains, while its response in recent months have proven its agility and deep understanding of its shoppers. The report also gave HEB credit for partnering with local restaurants to serve prepackaged meals. HEB stores also earned more recognition this year from U.S. Food and Wine Magazine as best supermarket in the U.S. 
great accolades for HEB. And I, I, we always say, see them doing big things. And I really enjoyed the partnership that they did with restaurants to have their meals in their stores as well. Oh, you bet. And of course, now the rest of the country knows what we've always known for a long time. HEB gets it right most of the time. Yes, um, I know it's right. been a lifesaver for our family as, as well as many families. Yeah. Well, congratulations to HEB. Now from HEB to another company, Peloton, KSAT was able to confirm that a Peloton showroom is set to open at the shops at La Contera. The Peloton showroom is reportedly taking the place of the pop-up Tesla showroom after suffering a major stock drop a year ago blamed on misdirected holiday ad. The company has bounced back in a big way this year due to the pandemic. According to Peloton's website, there are seven other showrooms in Texas, still no word yet when the actual opening date for the San Antonio one will be. And finally, the most popular hoopla in all of San Antonio, Timothy. Well, he now has his own mural at Legoland Discovery Center San Antonio as part of Legoland's annual holiday Bricktacular event. This is really cool. The entire mural is of Timothy is made out of Legos, and I do have to say they really nailed it. Timothy, Timothy is widely known for his social media posts and adoring love notes to his long-distance gal pal, Fiona the Hippo, who resides at the Cincinnati Zoo. You can visit Timothy at the SA Zoo or check out this mural at Legoland from now until January 4th. How cool is that? That whole thing is made out of Legos. That is awesome. It looks real. I want to know how long it took to put that together and how many people had to work on it. <laughs> what was that, Erica? Or how many Legos actually oh, are Oh, yeah, like, and how many Legos are used? A follow yeah, up. It was we'll have a follow-up. <laughs> All right, days of the week. <laughs> Today is National Monkey Day. Tomorrow is National Cupcake Day. Wednesday is Chocolate Covered Anything Day. Thursday is National Maple Syrup Day. Friday is National Ugly Christmas Sweater Day, so make sure you take yours out, Mark. <laughs> Saturday is for an every day. And Sunday is National Sangria Day and Go Caroling Day. Very good. I'm looking forward to Wednesday. Chocolate covered anything day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks, Erica. Good talk. Thanks, Erica. <laughs> good talk. <laughs> It's time to talk some snow, not necessarily <laughs> anywhere near us, Justin no. Horn. Just somewhere. Well, you know, it's Oklahoma. It's yeah. not too far away, but yeah, that's as close <laughs> as it's going to get to us. Oh, Take that's a look beautiful. At yeah, it was. Beautiful. They they got hit pretty hard. In fact, northeast Oklahoma up there towards the Tulsa area. You sure, got, that's not like New England or something. It looks like it should right? be. <laughs> Uh, but no, it is our, our friends up there in Oklahoma. They, they got a good dose of snow from this last storm system. All we got from it was wind, and we got a lot of it yesterday. Let's take a look at some of the wind gusts, uh, the peak wind gusts that uh, we had late Sunday night. 44 mile per hour wind gusts here in San Antonio, 46 mile per hour wind gusts in Bernie, 22 mile per hour wind gusts in Lavernia. As you were going to bed last night, you probably heard those winds howling. They set up most of the night and now they're starting to calm a little bit, but we still do have a wind chill to speak of here in San Antonio. 41 degrees at the airport right now. Northerly winds at about eight miles per hour, but that makes it feel like it's 36 outside. 36 Bernie stage the air temperature there. 36 Comfort, 36 in Kerrville, 42 Castroville, 42 down there in Pleasanton. We're sitting at 41 in Del Rio, 41 Gonzalez. So there you go, low 40s for the most part. We've still got some 30s holding on in the hill country. Dew points are extremely low. The air is dry behind that northerly flow, and it will stay dry for today. Now we will see a bit of an increase in moisture overnight tonight, and uh, it'll bump up pretty quickly overnight. That may allow for some cloud cover to move in. Wouldn't be surprised if we saw a little bit of patchy fog in spots too, but then the drier air works right back in behind another front. It's dry Wednesday, Thursday, and then the moisture picks back up again on Friday. We've got a parade of fronts here that just keep coming through. Not ahead of them, you get the, the moisture return and then behind them, the drier air. Uh, visible satellite picture shows we've got clear skies here in San Antonio, but notice there is a cloud deck that basically extends from Seguin to the east, Gonzales, uh, down towards Carn City, you're seeing some clouds. They're trying to work west. I don't know that they'll make it to San Antonio. I think we'll probably stay sunny here. But if you're watching us across some of our eastern counties, it is uh, mostly cloudy at this hour. Cuero, Howitzville, Gonzales, and Nixon, you're right on the line there as some of those clouds slowly work off to the west. Bigger picture, you notice some unsettled weather here in the Rocky Mountains. That's our next storm system. The last storm system is pushing east. Uh, bringing snow with it. Places like uh, New York City may see some snow out of this and some pretty heavy rain uh, for parts of the Carolinas and Virginia. But that's very quickly moving out to the east. And that cold air is plunged in behind that last system. 22 Oklahoma City, 
22 was shot 35 in Dallas. So that's why they saw some of that snow yesterday across parts of Oklahoma. We're feeling a little bit of that colder air too. I mentioned there's our next storm system. Uh, it'll dig south. It's not really going to bring us chances for rain. Unfortunately, everything's just moving too quick. We can't get moisture back in place, but uh, we will see those clouds build back in briefly tomorrow morning. So let's fast forward to seven o'clock tomorrow. Cloudy again. There could be some patchy fog in spots. And then uh, by midday, the clouds are clearing out and we're back in the sun again by Tuesday afternoon. Forecast for us today in the mid 50s for high sunny skies will drop back down into the 40s tonight. Clear skies until the morning time and then those clouds move in 63 on Tuesday and uh, turning breezy, especially Tuesday night, 58 Wednesday. And I think Thursday morning is our coldest morning. We could see a freeze. In fact, I think we will see a freeze here in San Antonio. And then uh, we see the clouds return again on Friday. There is a small chance for rain Friday night into Saturday morning, guys. A little more milder on the weekend. A little better in 60s. Yeah, not bad. Thank you, Justin. Yep. 921, 41 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, how do you get rid of a wasp nest? Well, in China, the answer is a flamethrower drone. We're going to show you how it works next. 119. That's how many human skulls were discovered by archaeologists in Mexico. The discovery was made at an Aztec ruin site located beneath central Mexico City. The skulls belonged to men, women, and children. They were found near a tower of nearly 500 previously discovered skulls. Now, researchers say the tower dates back to the 15th century. This latest discovery now raises more questions about the Aztecs' sacrificial rituals. And check out this drone that's been converted into a flying flamethrower in central China. It's all part of a campaign to get rid of more than 100 wasp nests. The drone's equipped with a gas tank and an arm length nozzle. Video shows the drone flying near a hive. The operator flips a switch and then the drone spits out fire. <laughs> the company that created the drone says it has destroyed 11 hives so far. There are more than 100 to go. Wow. That would definitely get your attention. I think so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a now. big nest, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. 926, 41 degrees. Not like the nest we have around our house, mm -hmm. definitely. So coming up, the Cowboys win, but the Texans and the Spurs lose. Max and RJ have highlights from Weekend Sports. Boosting confidence of the COVID-19 vaccine through TikTok. How a group of scientists is going viral for their creative videos. Presidential electors are meeting across the country today to formally cast their vote for president. A closer look at how the Electoral College works. That's coming up after the break. And speaking of after the break, before we head there, uh, we're going to look at 1604 and Hausman Road. We had an incident out in this direction earlier, but it looks like all the lanes are wide open and clear, including the shoulders. Welcome back. It's about 930 and has been an election season like no other. And today the Electoral College votes to finalize the results of the presidential race. So how exactly does that process work and what happens afterwards? Hillary Powell with the Associated Press explains. A month after Election Day in America, the election season cycle is still in full swing, with the vote that matters happening Monday. Print your name and your choice for the president. When voters cast ballots for president of the United States, they're also voting for the slate of electors from every state selected by that candidate's political party, who are part of the Electoral College. Georgetown law professor Caroline Fredrickson says, The college is a group of people, not a physical place. So when you vote in your state um, and you vote for, uh, you know, in this case, for president, for either Joe Biden or Donald Trump, um, they're actually a group of electors who represent um, that candidate um, who you've chosen. Um, and so it's through the popular vote process. Um, so those electors are really, um, you know, merely representing um, what the voters of that state uh, uh, have decided to do. Electors cast their votes by paper ballot, one ballot for president and one for vice president. When all votes are counted, President-elect Joe Biden is expected to have 306 electoral votes, more than the 270 needed to elect a president. In most states, laws require electors to vote for the popular vote winner. So people should not be worried about the period before the new year as producing uh, uh, some kind of additional turmoil um, or um, a, an opportunity for Donald Trump to overturn 
the will of the voters. Once the electoral votes are cast, they're sent to Congress, where both houses will convene in a joint session on January 6th to certify the official winner, who will be inaugurated on January 20th. Hillary Powell, The Associated Press. Outside with live cam, back over to Justin Horn, looking at rain chances. Uh, there are some small, small rain chances as we get later into this week, but all in all, it's 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 pretty quiet forecast, and uh, it's it's going to be a little bit breezy from time to time too as we get some fronts coming through. Let's take a look at the rain chances. Yeah, you see 20% there on Saturday. Don't get too worried if you have plans Saturday. I think it's mainly going to be in the morning time, so Friday night, early Saturday morning, uh, there could be a couple of showers. Uh, that's it otherwise and uh, temperatures 39 comfort 38 Kerrville 41 New Braunfels 40 at Randolph. It's a chilly start. We've got wind chills in the 30s right now and another check of that pollen counts worth mentioning again. Mountain Cedar jumped up a little bit today. It's at 50. It uh, is not as high as it could be, but just a heads up with those winds last night. It def definitely came up a little bit. 55 degrees your high temperature today. Sunset around 537. We'll have northerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. We'll talk about the rest of the forecast and cloud cover and how that plays into temperatures coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. All right, Justin, thank you. Taking a look outside with Transguide roads looking pretty okay right now. There's I-10 and De Zavala. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. And yay, the Cowboys. <laughs> They won! <laughs> yeah, wow. And they're still in the playoff hunt. <laughs> yeah, the Spurs tipped off their preseason. Apparently, nobody cares. RJ oh. and Max joined us to break up this weekend. Oh, Sports oh. action. Nobody's impressed. Is yeah. that better? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Not, not to start yet. I didn't and, uh, see it, so I can't jump yeah, into this yet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Stephanie gave the Cowboys like a participation clap. That was good. <laughs> Okay, a win is a win. They still yes. won. They did more than just play the game. Can we clap for that too, Max? Yeah, I just I like, uh, a nice little. I was just I would loved RJ's job, intro. Man. Surprisingly, the Cowboys won and are still somehow in the playoff hunt. That's right. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's check out uh, some of the highlights here. Cowboys taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. Probably, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there aren't many teams worse than the Cowboys. This is one of them right here. The uh, they used to be called the Bungles. I remember oh, when the goodness. Last... <laughs> is that with the fridge? Uh, <laughs> the fridge, wow. Um, okay, so Alden Smith picks up a fumble here, takes it all the way in there. Cowboys go up 10-0. Interesting little side note to this game. Andy Dalton, who of course is starting yeah, for Dallas. Yeah, it's a revenge game. Return, yes. We had a little, uh, a little excitement there with Andy's return to uh, Cincinnati. But I think we Cowboys should also preface reason. the Bengals are usually better than this, or they should be. <laughs> Joe Burrow's out. He had a big leg injury. And... They're so bad in trying to get that number two pick overall. They were literally handing the ball over to the Cowboys numerous times today. Yeah, I mean, uh, Cincinnati just uh, just a rough uh, rough go about it. As Max mentioned, Joe Burrow gets hurt, and really that was kind of the uh, the end to their season. But the Cowboys, 4-9. Yep. Still, I mean, they're two games behind Washington. Now, if Washington wins one of their last three games, then the Washington the football like team. <laughs> it happened, Max. If Washington wins one of their last three games, they would eliminate Dallas. So, hmm. here we go. Maybe. Washington will win one of their oh, final wow. three games. <laughs> Washington defense, very good. First round pick looks great. Yeah. I'm impressed. Here's the thing, though. Cowboys. <laughs> Still yes, in the playoff hunt. Mm -hmm. As an Amari Cooper, full transparency, as an Amari Cooper fantasy owner, I think that Andy Dalton could have gotten a few more touchdowns. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, look, Andy, he came, he came out, played pretty well. Look mm -hmm. at him there. He's excited there. there um, and uh, Cowboys move on. They host San Francisco next Sunday at noon. So, again, Cowboys still in this thing. Somehow the NFC East, Max's Eagles are still in this thing, and Mark's Washington football team. So. I don't think anyone's happy if you're an NFC East fan in any capability, but Cowboys still in it, and they get yeah. some like, playoffs. Yeah. But there most teams in the mm. East are playing way better in December That's than true. they were December. at the beginning of the year. And, and Washington's really the team to watch there. Okay. Yes, they uh, are. A team that probably no one wants to watch anymore, the uh, Houston Texans. Oh. I'm... This Team is a brittle with injuries and suspensions, though. Sure. We got to preface sure. it properly. Sure. Okay, first play of the game for oh. Chicago here, and this is all you need to know. Uh, this guy, David Montgomery, runs eight. He's yards not even a great success. running back. I was about to say this is probably the most amount of yards this guy's gotten all season. He uh, burns the Texans' defense there. They uh, they fall big time to the Bears. The Bears had lost like five straight, right? Max? Yep. Yep. <laughs> they actually they started off really hot. They had Nick Foles in there. 
and not great, but it looks like this is a bounce back game for Chicago. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, okay, so Houston, they fall to four and nine. The worst part of this is that they don't even have their draft picks they next season. They don't even have yeah, their Yeah, they, they're going to be, uh, that's going to be like a top 10 pick. They don't even have it. No, they traded for Laramie Tunsil, trying to get protection for Deshaun Watson, who lost three huge wide receivers. Obviously, mm. the. You want to say the bungles? They bungled the trade. That's why Bill O'Brien's no longer here. DeAndre yeah, Hopkins Bill on the Cardinals. Yeah, Bill O'Brien. Okay, all right. Hey, some good news here as we move on to uh, UTSA. Congrats to the Roadrunners. They haven't accepted an invitation to play SMU in this year's, okay, get this, Tropical <laughs> Smoothie, smoothie Cafe, Cafe Frisco, Frisco Bowl. Bowl. Say that five times fast. I don't even want to try. Um, no, but this is good stuff here. Coach Jeff Trailer turned around the program 7-4 and four this year. This is his first season with the Roadrunners. There's even talk that he, he might get another job somewhere. I hope oh. not. I think that he's done a great job with this program. What's your most uh, impressive part about this team? I just love the fact they have so many local kids, including yeah. this one right here, Sincere McCormick, Frank oh, Harris. He's they, been... Yeah, it's just a great local story, too. So uh, congrats to the Roadrunners. They play this Saturday on ESPN2 against SMU. All right. Okay, moving on. There we go. Topic of the morning. <laughs> Got to there we go. There we go. Okay, Spurs, uh, they have opened their preseason and not to uh, rave reviews, as okay. Mark was saying earlier. It's oh, preseason. Nice some thoughts here. I, have so, I love preseason. I'm upset we don't have summer league this year, which is usually where you get to see all the rookies. But preseason is preseason. You get to see the first flashes, new chemistry guys. This guy, our rookie yeah. right here, I think it's an ugly shot, but it goes in, and that's the important part. <laughs> Uh, yes, we're talking about Devin Vassell. He uh, actually had a really good game here. 12 points, six rebounds, three steals, one block, played about 25 minutes. Uh, no Lenny Walker in the second half. Of course, no Derek White, mm -hmm. no Keldon Johnson. Spurs fans not happy, though, because they started kind of more of the traditional lineup. And I don't know if that's Pop just it was trying great. to hold back some cards a little bit. It was great. It what? was great <laughs> because it was so funny because we saw the small lineup in the bubble and yeah. everyone was like, oh, the Spurs are going to kind of do the zig with everyone else and yeah. do a small ball lineup, exactly. and then he comes out and the shortest guy on the team to start was DeJounte Murray. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was not the uh, small bubble ball lineup no. that we had been promised, but again, as we were saying, first preseason game, out of the way, no fans there at the AT&T Center. It was definitely a, a different feel for everything. Just for the record though, preseason doesn't affect the playoff standings, <laughs> and special shout out Lonnie Walker, you mentioned him, it is his birthday, so Today. happy birthday, Lonnie Walker. Happy, well, happy birthday. birthday. There Lonnie we go, Walker, Lonnie. Of I, is he 21? I'm not even sure he's 21 yet. Yeah. He, he may have turned 21 today. Happy he birthday. Have, way, legally happy birthday. have a, some wine with Pop or something. There you go. Oh. <laughs> RJ, Thanks, Max, thank you so Thanks, much. Guys. 939, 41 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. An international group of experts put together by the United Nations is going viral on TikTok how they're boosting confidence in the COVID-19 vaccine in a creative way. Welcome to KSET Deals at KSETDeals.com. Today we have three products for you at great prices. We start with the Retro Game Console. This comes with 620 pre-installed games and two remote controllers. Now the retail price, $99. The KSET Deals price, $39.99. That's a 60% discount. Moving on to the Aquasonic Toothbrush and Travel Case. This has 40,000 vibrations per minute. Comes with a travel case and eight brush heads. The retail price, $99, case at deals price, $39.99, a 59% discount. Moving on to the ultimate anti-aging duo, the 24 karat gold and bee venom anti-aging beauty bundle, nature's Botox, retail price, $512, the case at deals price, $39.99, that's a 92% discount. And you can only get these deals at ksatdeals.com along with several others. Welcome back, 944. Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine now on the way to all U.S. states and the District of Columbia. And the first healthcare worker has already gotten the shot in New York, where there's hope, there is also some hesitation. And that's why some scientists are trying to boost confidence for the vaccine. And as CNN's Anna Stewart reports, they're doing it all through TikTok. <laughs> Explaining how a vaccine works isn't easy. So these TikToking scientists have got creative. Maybe is that okay? Answering all sorts of questions to allay vaccine concerns and promote confidence. 
They're part of Team Halo, an international group of experts put together by the UN. And they've generated more than 20 million views on TikTok. Here we've been working almost exclusively on making a COVID-19 vaccine. The a vaccine research scientist for 30 years, Paul McKay is working on a COVID-19 vaccine candidate being developed by Imperial College. And he's creating TikTok videos on the side. You're not just tackling the anti-vaxxers or the anti-vax sentiment. You're tackling people who just aren't sure and have questions. You have the right to ask questions. You have the right to know what goes into your body. You're now a bit of a TikTok star. I wouldn't say star. <laughs> we come out and we say uh, vaccines have been, you know, the single greatest health benefit uh, since clean water. Um, it's saved more people's lives than uh, any other medical intervention. Team Halo is using social media to bolster vaccine confidence. Of course, that's also where rumour and misinformation spreads. In the UK, just 63.4% of people surveyed said they would definitely get a COVID-19 vaccine. After viewing misinformation online, that number dropped to just 54%. Um, I'm very cautious um, with anything that I don't really know or understand. It's been researched and everything. Um, yeah. They've gone through clinical trials, so... Yeah, we trust Why them. We? Scientists, I guess. You've got to take a leap of faith for the greater good of society, you know? If you don't do that and nobody takes it, then it's not going to work. Health experts warn that a vaccine will need to be accepted by at least 70% of the population to provide herd immunity, and perhaps more. I'm just giving people facts and information. I'm not trying to change their minds. I'm not trying to make them think differently or change their lifestyles. I'm just trying to give them the information that they uh, don't have access to. Um, so I'm not against them. I'm wanting to work with them. Anna Stewart, CNN, London. And we were just telling you about those first vaccine shots being administered today. We know that uh, her name is Sandra. She is a critical care nurse in the state of New York. And she said this morning, quote, we all need to do our parts to put an end to the pandemic, end quote. First one. First one. History making day. 947. Justin is standing by with more on your local forecast and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it's taken a while for the leaves to change around here, guys, mm -hmm. but they, they finally have. We've got some beautiful colors. I want to show you a picture on our case at uh, Connect. This is from Sylvia. And you see the uh, the red cores there. This is uh, maple out in Seguin. Pretty impressive, full bloom there. It is very, very nice. Lost maples had some beautiful colors this year. Sylvia, thank you so much. Let's look at the uh, temperature extremes over the last 24 hours. I think this is pretty cool. Got up to 89 yesterday in Falcon Lake, which is down to our south. And then uh, the cold temperature this morning was at Angel Fire, New Mexico, negative 19. Uh, kind of interesting that these uh, temperatures aren't that far away. We're talking about maybe uh, 900 miles or so between the two. 108 degree temperature difference from the high to the low. We'll see where the high temperature is today. We'll not probably be in Texas uh, because we had that front sweep through. We had some cooler air work in. Beautiful time lapse this morning. Sunrise, gorgeous. We had just enough high clouds here off in the distance. Get us some colors in the sky. Temperatures Right now, 41 degrees. Dew point is at 27, and we've got a northerly breeze at about 8, contributing to a wind chill. It makes it feel like it's 36 degrees outside at this hour. 39 Canyon Lake, 41 New Braunfels, 40 Randolph, 45 down there in Pleasanton, 43 Kennedy, 42 Gonzales, and 41 right now in Del Rio. We mentioned the wind chills. Right now, it's somewhere in the mid-30s. For most of us, feels like 34 currently in the brothels. You're going to want your jacket even through the lunch hour probably today. Uh, the dew point tracker, so the dew point is, is low. We're in the 30s right now. It'll actually jump up a little bit tonight. We have a very brief window where moisture tries to come back in out ahead of our next storm system. And these storm systems are kind of like rapid fire, right? We keep getting these fronts coming through. But uh, tomorrow, there will be just enough moisture to create some cloud cover probably early. Front slides through and then we're back in the drier Wednesday and Thursday before we see another big bump in moisture and that probably occurs during the day on Friday. Visible satellite picture does show we have a cloud deck that uh, right now is sitting just to the east of Seguin, uh, east of Lavernia, Gonzales here in the clouds with some breaks going on down there around Victoria. But it's going to be mostly cloudy for our time this morning. Nixon, Gonzales, Howitzville, and we'll see if this cloud cover slowly makes its way towards San Antonio. It's possible, but it should uh, start to break up a little bit here over the next couple of hours. So we've got one storm system 
moving away. That's some, bringing some snow and heavy rain to parts of the East Coast, and then another one moving in. And again, all of this is moving very quickly. Uh, the forecast calls for clear skies today, but as we get into tomorrow morning, we'll see the clouds surge back in. I think we could see some patchy fog tomorrow, too. And then the clouds hang around through about midday, and then they push out, and we get the drier air moving back in once again with another front. And it could get a little bit breezy, too. Temperatures mid 50s today for highs, and then falling off into the 40s tonight. Uh, we'll call for a 63 tomorrow, but then turning breezy and cooler. We're 58 Wednesday. And Thursday morning, we are expecting a widespread freeze, 31 here in San Antonio. And then our next chance for, well, small chance for rain would be Friday night into Saturday morning, guys. Thank you, Justin. Sounds good. 950, 41 degrees. We'll be right back. People always ask us, how come you look so chipper in the morning? The truth is, we live here. Got any laundry? Live with Kelly and Ryan. This essay salutes holiday greeting is brought to you by Jason's Water Systems. Hi, my name is Emily, owner of Jason's Water Systems out of San Antonio, Texas. I'm here with my husband, Jack, and my four-year-old daughter, Jada Lynn. And we just wanted to reach out and say thank you so much to all the military families out there keeping us safe, the first responders out there keeping us safe during this time. Thank you so much for the bottom of our hearts. And we just wanted to wish you guys a very Merry Christmas and a ho, ho, ho. Thank you, guys. As the number of COVID-19 cases keeps climbing, so does the toll it's taking on frontline health care workers. Coming up today on the News at Noon, how some four-legged friends are helping. And taking a look outside with TransGuide this morning, looking at 1604 and Bandera, things looking okay out there. And also running smoothly at 281 and Loop 410. And it's uh, 43 right now. We'll be up around 55 this afternoon. Mostly sunny skies. Another chilly start tomorrow. We'll get some clouds to start, by the way, on your Tuesday, then clear out during the afternoon, turning breezy and cooler yet again. 58 on Wednesday. Keep in mind, we may see a freeze Thursday morning. We want to put a San Antonio kid on your radar. His name is Angel David. Alcocer. Yes, yeah, super cute. And he's seven years old now, but he got his start when he was two years old. He's going to be known or they're thinking he's going to be a great musician. He's already playing the drums. So take a look. I think we have some pictures of him. We've got a little. Oh, video. there you go. There's the website. We've got an article on him on KSAT.com. It's already got the hair and the whole outfit yes. going on, but we want to play a little clip of this. So he has been. You can hear he's already we keeping we the will. beat. <laughs> That's what he's known Amazing. for. So he was on America's Got Talent and was the star of a few viral videos playing the drums. Yeah, he's from down in the valley, but uh, mom and dad moved him up here to San Antonio to get more exposure and showcase his talent to the world. I love the video. So uh, some of his uh, influences range from the Beatles to mm -hmm. Rod Stewart. As far as his future goes, mom says uh, Angel wants to become a digital artist and a huge rock star. One of his favorite parts, fixing his hair and dressing up like a rock star. <laughs> yeah, he's already playing the part. Yes, he is. Well, good luck there, Angel. And thanks for joining day. us. <laughs>